Yay. Okay, so child development 110, this is our final essay assignment. Really excited to share this with you guys. I really scaled it back just to make sure I'm assessing what I need to assess, which is these three topics here. So this is what it looks like in Canvas. It's under the assignments tab, right? And so it's just a basic summary and you're writing an essay. Now, I am mostly focused on content, and but I did put interesting tips and tricks here on APA styling. But my number one concern is content. What are you writing? What have you learned? How did you put it all together, right? The APA formatting is only um, five points out of the entire 50 points. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put that as an, before we start going down the rabbit hole, uh, people get kind of spooked out about APA format and it's it's really specific and yes, it is. However, I'm very flexible at this stage because this is community college and yes, as we're going forward, we, we need to have our writing more formalized in APA format, but APA is also very, very wacky. Like it's so specific that it can be very anxiety provoking. And that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to assess what you guys learned. And now I also, before I even get into it, I know that essays are not everybody's cup of tea. I get that. Um, but at the same time, I'm not asking for this massive research paper. So this is not a research paper. This is more of like, hey, what did you learn? Okay. So st starting with this, you're going to put one paper together because if, if you have separate papers to upload, Sometimes in your device, you upload one and the, you upload the second one, the first one disappears. You upload the third one, the second and first one disappears. I just want one paper, one paper, one paper, one, okay? And I did also use the Turnitin feature. I just need to make sure that you guys are citing the book. I'm not asking you guys to look out for any other Bronfenbrenner literature, articles, nothing. You are getting the information from our book and what you learned in this class, that's it. So I'm giving you, I'm going to give you tips on how to do this. Okay, number one, the question, describe the socialization of the child focusing on the interrelationship, child, family, and community. Okay, it's kind of a broad statement, right? But socialization of the child happened in chapters one and two, right? So go back there. Now, here's the thing. Whatever you read in the book is pretty, it's accurate, right? That's kind of what we're going for. But if you were to use the ideas that you learned in the book, you need to reference the book. So down here, let me show you. Let me give you a little spotlight here. Right here, as I give you this little hint right here. If you are referencing something from the book and you like what it said, um, please put it in your own words. Now you can put it in a quote, but quote, according to Burns, you can put a quote, right? And that's all you have to put. But if you're going to reinterpret what she says, then you're going to reinterpret it, use your words, use your own words. And then at the end, put a parentheses and say Burns, comma, page 67. That's it. You do not have to get any more research for this book, for this essay at all. Not all, right? So I want you guys just to calm down. The only thing that's gonna go bad is if you don't put any references, if you don't reference Burns in any way at all. If you, I would say um, in each essay, so one essay is one page. And I mean, double spaced, I'm looking for maybe three paragraphs, something that you can check it in. Now you can go two pages, that's up to you. I know that when you go double space, um, two pages is really more like one page single space. So it's up to you. How I personally do it when I write something, I actually, I'm not a great typist, but if I'm caffeinated, like I'm kind of am right now, um, I'm not a great typist. I will put on, I'll open a document, put on, make sure Grammarly's uh, in my Google or as a plugin, you know, I've signed into Grammarly. So I'll get the tips and tricks as I go. Um, I will just start hammering out ideas. That's what I do when I write an essay. It doesn't mean that it's, it doesn't mean that it's organized. It doesn't mean that it's right. It just is all these ideas that I might want to say. So even before I open the book, I go, okay, so what did I learn? How would I describe this to someone? How would, what would I say? How would I describe this to somebody who wasn't in the class or didn't go to college? Because I can tell you, I didn't even know the word socialization until college. And when I heard that, I, that I, I, was a, I had changed my major once, twice, I think. 
And then when I took a sociology class, I was like, this is it. I clicked it. So my undergrad is in sociology. Um, so what I'm saying to you is like, just take a second and just write, just write as much as just write a page. Don't worry about the formatting. Don't worry about the spaces. Just sit there and write, just write it. Right. What did I, how would I describe this to somebody? Because chances are, if somebody hasn't been in college or summer bridge, because I used to teach sociology at summer bridge, if somebody hasn't been in college, they don't what socialization is what's another word for socialization if you were trying to describe socialization to somebody another way of saying that another way of saying socialization oh like do you say to a mom oh you are socializing your child very well what do you say maybe in the chat okay something like you're raising your child you're teaching your child you're influencing your child you're nurturing your child right so things like that when you when you think of socialization just put down everything you're thinking of right and then go back and organize into paragraphs number i definitely 100 need to tell you if you're saying number one here's describe socialization and you give me one massive paragraph i cannot read it my eyes start to my eyes start to go like this and I can't read it. So please organize your thoughts into paragraphs. That's a huge tip from, from me to you. Okay, number two, critically evaluate the educational, political and socioeconomic impacts on children and families. Typically I do this as a choice board and people can get really creative with this, um, but this one, we're just keeping it to a straight essay. Um, so critically evaluate. We're not asking you to get on a pulpit in front of Congress to say like, I am critically evaluating the political educational, socioeconomic, and positive children and families. Tell me, how do you think education impacts a child and their family? The education system. Here's one paragraph. How do you think politics influences children and families? How do you think socioeconomic, so basically class, education, right? All those things that like if it's like we talked in that about lower class, middle class, uh, working class, middle class, upper middle class, capitalist class. I'm going to give you a hint for all three of these essays. Please use course terms. Um, definitely for number one, I would use the words, the systems, the names of the systems. Um, I would say in each essay, I'm looking for five to 10 course terms. Maybe I'll put that in here, tips in there, another tip. Um, so then critically evaluate, are you saying, let's say in your house, what was more impactful? Was it economics, politics, or education? So for me growing up, um, we, I was middle-class all the way, um, probably on the lower side of middle-class. I mean, I grew up in such a very diverse community, but like in a, in a sort of white neighborhood, but then I went to all title, title one schools. So diverse as diverse can be. Um, so for me, if I was looking at number two, I would say, um, so I would talk about education as an influence on the families, but I also also talk about politics as an influence on family and then socioeconomic impacts on children and families. When it came to education, I would say that that would have a personal impact on me because education was very much pushed in my family. Although, um, only one of my parents had a bachelor's degree. It was, there was an expectation or a culture, right? Of going to school and going to college and getting, uh, doing better than our parents. Um, politics, um, I didn't, I didn't personally feel like political impact, but politics has a lot to do with funding, right? Funding of schools, funding of social programs. So how do you think that plays with families and children, right? Also, um, socioeconomic impacts. If you are struggling financially, if your family, so maybe when you were growing up, you had um, like both your parents had like COVID, right? Both your parents had a job and now all of a sudden your brother and parents don't have a job. I've had students in the last two semesters and even this semesters that both my parents lost their job and we had a move and with our grandparents in Texas. 
yeah, so so again, how do you think education politics and economics impact, right? So give me, I'm saying at least three paragraphs, right? And if I'm saying five to 10 terms, that's like three terms per paragraph. So it might end up being more like six paragraphs. Now I'm also, okay, and I'll, let me finish up number three and then I'll, and I'll cover it, wrap it up. Number three, describe strategies that empower families and encourage family involvement and children development. Now, hint, this is going to be ecology of the family, ecology of non-parental child care, um, a, a, ecology of parenting, right? How do parents, what are some strategies? What are some things that parents can do to um, help a child develop, right? So you're going to look at those chapters. I also want to suggest like chapter 10 works into that too, because strategies that empower families also comes from the community. Yeah. And if you look at it in every single chapter, you're seeing how family, like, and so you'll see like when they say microsystem influences, that's where the family is, right? So if you're not sure, what are the strategies that empower families, empower families? That's a nice word for saying what support, um, like encourage, increase, right? What are some of the strategies that parents can do, right? So definitely look in, in ecology of families, ecology of parenting, non-parental childcare, community, yeah, and even schools, family involvement in schools, that meso system business, right? Good. Um, so again, tips for success. I'm going to put here, I'm going to add in those, the tips that I just said. Okay. And I realized I didn't post the rubric, so I will do that right now as well after we get off the recording. Um, so tips here, um, use course terms. Um, so I would say five to 10 per essay, right? Now you don't have to define that course term. You have, don't have to say um, the, uh, the definition of family is two or more people. Like you use the, use the term correctly and you're good. You don't have to define it. Cause I know, you know, uh, first of all, I know you have the book. I know some people don't. Um, <laughs> number two, um, I trust that you can read. Now some people are stronger at reading. Some people are less strong at reading. That's fine, okay but you don't have to redefine the exact term. You don't have to give me the definition, like it's an outline or uh, a test, okay? Just tell me like, um, use the term properly and then I know that you know it, right? This isn't, this isn't regurgitating. This is use the term. That's, when they, that's what the term critically analyzes. You're taking the stuff you know, putting it onto the stuff that you wanna describe, right? Um, again, keep in mind that you don't also have to um, convince me. A lot of times in essays, people are trying to convince me. Well, socialization is really, really important because parents need to properly socialize their child so the children can be independent. So, that, and and I believe that socialization is super important. Yeah, got it. I got it. I know you got it. You don't have to convince me, right? Just tell me what you know. Tell me how you know these things. Oh, Johanna's here. Hey, and then um. And I will record that. I will post this recording so everybody has it, even if you jump in. Hi, Johanna. Um, no big deal. I'm recording these the instructions for the final essay, and then I'll post that. So even if you jumped in late, it's not a big deal. You can go back and watch the recording. I'll have that posted today. Um, I'm adding here as a tip. Um, use course terms five to ten per essay. You do not need to um, define them. Like. Um, exactly but um use them properly so for example when i say use them properly so let's say in um essay number one you're saying um describe the socialization of a child focusing on any relationship of child family and community so if you start saying um socialization occurs um Primary socialization occurs with primary agents of socialization. That's like two terms. Um, within the family structure and the family is located in the exosystem. That's not accurate, right? You don't have to define exosystem. You don't have to define the term of family. You don't have to define primary agents of socialization, but you have to use them properly. Does that make sense? 
good because every once in a while somebody will like start going off on a tangent and it's like some of the words are accurate and then all of a sudden like the definite it's like they got their streams crossed and so i can't give the full points for somebody who's got this the information wrong right if you're using an opinion that's your opinion i that's not wrong right um but if you were trying to describe um a if you're trying to describe parenting styles and you're saying um, my parents were very um, warm and democratic um, they were super permissive that's not warm and democratic is not permissive right you have to be accurate on those things that's number one um, so again um, let's see those are some tips you do not have to do research just use your book if you use a book, here's this. If you use it as an inspirational resource, please use the reference, the APA style, um, reference, Burns, page number at the end of the sentence. If you, um, I'll give you another hint here too. And I said this earlier. If you quote the book, if you quote the book, Use this format according to Burns page. Let me and I can even pull it up right now. I'll do it like this. Pull out my book. According to Burns, just find a random page. Okay, cool. This is one of my favorite it's affective methods of socialization. Um, um, you, then you do this, you say, according to Burns, page 58, um, let's see here, affect emerges from person to person interaction. Now there's more to that sta statement, right? And so, but that's a quote. That's a quote for the book. So it's like, if you are gonna quote the book, you kind of like lead it into that. You say, according to Burns, page 58, let's do this one. And let me make sure it's capitalized, Burns, page 58. And you put the quotes on both sides. Affect emerges from person to person interaction, right? So then you would back up what you're saying after that. Make sense? Does that make sense? So there's two ways to reference the book. One is like preemptively saying, hey, I'm going to quote the book and I start with according to Burns or Burns states or um, something like that, right? You, that's your front load on how to reference the book. You're, if you're just taking, if I looked at this whole um, page 58, if I looked at this whole section on affective methods of socialization and I wanted to summarize it because again, you only have like one or two pages. I'm not going to freak out if you go over two pages, but I'm not trying to put too much on your plate this week. Um, if I looked at this whole section on page 58 and 59 about affective um, methods of socialization, and I was going to just use my own words, I would say aff active, affective methods of socialization have to do with the emotional ties that we have with one another and um, how we care about other people's feedback or opinions or how like how that connection teaches us how to be an adult and then I would put that's just like a huge massive overview right of like a whole page of text and that's my own words it's not super collegiate it's not super crazy like super bossy words um, and then I would put Burns page 58 to 59 right Make sense? So again, I'm less concerned about the APA formatting. However, the content is more important. However, there are some tips here. Okay. As you are going down this rabbit hole of like, oh gosh, how do I format my paper? How do I make this look right? I posted an extra credit library training on how to do this. Now it's up to you. If you have the time to do it, great, it's five points. You take this little, it's a canvas, it's a little canvas module at the library. You click here, it takes you to the little assignment I created. 
in there. It says click here. You go down the rabbit hole. You you know take this little class set up by the library, which is really easy and bitch. And I think it might be thirty to ninety minutes. Not certain. In fact, I should probably take that just so I know. Um, <laughs> And then you get a certificate posted. I give you the five points. You don't have to do a write-up or anything. So this particular assignment could actually get you your 50 points. Plus, by the way, if this is super rad, like super radical, I can always do extra than 50 points, right? Blow my hair back. Don't get, don't get crazy about it. But, you know, I'm very happy to do more points. Um, again, here, the template for library guides. If you click this, this is a website that has a bunch of different things on there um, that will give you like a student reference, a student this, a student, like, right. And so I am looking for at the very least, again, one paper submitted, one paper. Don't submit three separate essays. Cause again, that'll mess up in Canvas. Trust me, that was a huge thing last semester. Um, one paper that says like um, APA has a, has a cover sheet right? And it'll show you running head. This is all in there. If you go down, I can't do it for you. That's the thing I want to make sure. I'm not going to freak out if like, again, the formatting is a little bit off, but I'm looking for double spaced, 12 point font, one inch margins. Don't give me a huge space in between the paragraphs either. Now, a lot of people go, oh, my Word document, my Word document does all these extra spaces. I will show you right now how to fix that. Okay, so please also use Grammarly.com. As a, as a reminder, don't use like, hey, uh, in stuff, stuff or hashtags or emojis, don't do it, this is college, right? This is kind of like your wrap up to this semester, right? So each essay is 15 points possible. And I, again, I will post the rubric, um, 15 points possible for each answer and additional five points for the correct APA format. Do you see how like, I'm just giving you guys a super huge nudge to get it to make it look right. So at the very least, one inch margins. Trust me, I know what one inch margins look like. I know what 1.25 margins look like. Don't do it. 12 point font, double space. Don't give me one and a half spaces. Don't do it. I know what that looks like. Trust me. I have visual, like I have, I'm like highly visual and I have a little bit of OCD. So I know immediately if this is not 12 point font, and if this is the margins are off, right? Okay, so let's let's do this. And then grading, 50 points total. But again, you can get more, right? Um, and I will do this here. Uh, we will use Turnitin because here's the thing, it gives me like a plagiarism report immediately. And here's the thing, you can quote the book. I just then look immediately, did you front load it? Or did you at least put the reference at the end? Okay. So I'm not an APA guru, I'm not an expert. It's a little irritating to me, but I think it's a standardized format that's been around a long time and I think we should use it. So, whew. all right, so let me answer some questions on this and then I'm gonna stop the recording and then, um, actually no, I'll move into a Word document real quick so you can see what I'm talking about spacing. Um, questions, what do you guys have questions on so far? I'm saying right now it should take you if you're asking how long is this going to take it kind of depends on your writing style and, and how organized you are and please as a reminder um 1159 uh, i'll do this one uh i'll do bigger okay so real quick 1159 the last is on sunday and i cannot extend it canvas will cut you off that is an equity issue that is a posted class schedule i cannot change it i cannot accept work in my email at 12.01 or Monday morning or Tuesday morning, or <laughs> trust me, I have to turn in the grades by Thursday. And I have people like emailing me like Tuesday here, can I turn that in? No, sorry, I can't, I, I wish. I'm flexible all semester long, but the end is the end, right? So if you have Word, you can use a blank document, but I'm just gonna show you, they have a single space and I'll show you how to change it, right? So it's right here, it tells me right here, margins, one inches, all sides font Calibri 11 point. Do yourself a favor. We'll change that. We'll, we'll make that. Calibri is good. That's usually what I use is Calibri. Um, but you can use Times New Roman. You can use Arial. You can use, I think, Garamond, Helvetica. It's up to whatever works for you. I can tell you sometimes um, certain fonts, I can't read them because they're, the A's are squiggly. Like, for example, this little squiggly A business, not my friend, but, but since it's nice and clean, I can watch it. I can read that. 
but sometimes there's weird just because I have a little bit of a learning disability. If there's a P and a Q that looks similar or the B and the P looks too similar, I can't read it. So choose your font, but it has to be appropriate. So hit create and however you do word, great. This gives you, so I can already tell this is a one inch margin. You can see right here, always use this. This is, a, if you don't have, um, if you don't have the ruler, so now I can tell you I'm a little bit pretty good at word. Um, so if the, you don't have the ruler, go to view. And view is going to give you options on what you are viewing. I, I wish they would do more of this. Um, so view, and then right here, it'll tell you right here, ruler. I can also do grid lines. If I was going to be drawing something, no, I don't want that. But the ruler, see how it disappears? And how it comes in? If you also don't have this massive toolbar up here, there is this little, see this? It's called a ribbon. This is like the tool ribbon. I can collapse it. And then I can also go back to view and it drops down. Anytime I open this, it'll drop down. If I click off, it goes up. It's up to you what you like. I particularly like the ribbon, right? So I go back to show it and then I hit pin. That's just me. Now I also hit control and that use the little wheel in your mouse and it scrolls up. Or you can go down here to the bottom and you do plus or minus. I'm old, you guys have probably have better eyes than me, but I keep everything around 100%. And then I start writing, right? Now, again, this is a one inch margin, I can already tell. And so I would put, um, there is a cover sheet with APA. Please look into that, it's up to you. I'm not gonna do that right now, I'm doing the essays. You can do essay, essay one, and then write the essay, copy it over, right? And then as you write, Right, I get it. I'm not a super fast typer. So this is this is the, the template that tells you. Oh, sorry, I'm doing all kinds of extra things. This is the template that tells you it's a single space, right? We don't want single space. So I'm just gonna keep doing this for a second. I'm afraid you can type 150 words a minute, and I just don't know how that does it. Because again, I'm visual. I have to I watch my fingers typing and it's maddening. But that's just my process, right? So let's say this is your process. You're just writing. You're just like writing like a per crazy person. Um, so I just forgot all this. This looks like Scandinavian writing. Um, so if I want to change the format, um, there's a couple different ways. So you can drag and highlight the whole paragraph. I love to do that. As like it's giving me a hard time. I go from the bottom up. Or here's another trick: tr triple click in a paragraph. One, two, three, done. Okay. Um, so now you're going to go to uh, right here where it says home. Home is pretty much where we all. Question, yes. Yes, Stacey. Uh, I'm looking in chat now. See, I missed you. Do we need a cover page? Oh, go, 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 go. Um, you know what? I'm not going to freak out about a cover, cover page, but APA asks for that. So we're going to just go for it. Try it. By the way, if you're writing, so to me, cover pages are kind of lame, right? But what I say is focus on the content. So as you're writing, if you're like, oh, I need to put insert my cover page, watch, check this out. Put your cursor to the very top and go here to blank page or cover page and insert, right? Don't give me, oh, don't give me any of this like designy, designy crap. Don't do that, right? Don't, don't do any of this business, right? It's just gonna, it's gonna give you an op, an option for a blank one, right? So you can do um, from office.com, it might have one that's like just APA format, but this is where you do it. You can even just do a blank page and go to town. So here's, here's where we were and here we are. Yeah, so in APA, it does ask you to work with the header. And so it's gonna be something like this. Don't give me any colors, don't do any of that business. Trust me on this one, so. Again, here, we're still at home is where we live. And then insert is where you can do blank page, page break, header, footer. Make sense? Cool. All right, so let's go back to format formatting. So triple click, one, two, three. And this is home. This is where the basics are, right? Again, another thing here we could use is this normal, meaning like if your formatting gets weird, you'd always, always click, click normal and it goes back to where right now here is where we can talk about the font and I know you guys know how to do this but again Arial looks like this and that might be cleaner right for you 
Don't do aerial black. That's not okay. So Ariel's okay. Um, Calibri's okay. Let's do one here. The next one is going to be, I think these are okay. California and Callisto, Cambria. I think these are all okay. But yeah, Calibri's pretty straight. Um, Century Gothic is no, don't do that one. Century's okay. Century School Book's okay. Um, but Times New Roman is way down here. That's pretty, that's pretty common. Let's do Times New Roman. Now, remember the template says 12. So don't do, I mean, it says 11. So do 12. Give yourself a break right there. Now, again, this is single space. So we're at Times New Roman 12. And what I did is I, I didn't include this. So look, it says Calibri 11, right? No. So I want to, I'm going to hit select all. So all the words are highlighted. See how it drops my formatting here because it's mixed. There's more than one font. There's more than one. So let's go back to times. So I'm just a little bit bigger. Go back to 12. So now you know your entire document is times New Roman 12. Okay. Now we're going to go spacing. Right here, see how these lines up and down? Now we're going to hit, hit that once. And we're at single, which is beautiful. Now what happens here is that, uh, let's go here to two. Look, so how you know you got all, this is again, this is what I tell everybody. Write everything single space. Get out what you wanted to say. It doesn't matter how long it is. Give yourself a guideline of one page because single space, one page is double space, two pages. Make sense? It just double, right? Is anyone else having an issue? I'm not able to see any of the changes that you're making online. The screen is frozen. Oh, is it really? I can't tell. So let me see. Is it frozen for you guys? I'll, I'll keep going back until it works. It is still recording. So hopefully it's recording my screen okay, but I can keep going. Oh, same with Leanne. Okay. So let me, let me, let's try this. I'm going to double check my browser, make sure there's nothing else going in there. I'm going to cut out my browser. And then let me, I made some correct corrections or edits on the assignments. So I'm going to save that. And so all I have running right now is Zoom. I have Canvas up on the final essay page, and I'm gonna even cut out of my Bitmoji tab. So I have literally one tab and Zoom running, that's it. Let me see if I refresh Canvas and see if that helps. Sometimes it's a bandwidth issue. I know sometimes when it's windy, it does weird stuff, but um, that's not today, we're not windy today. Okay, now tell me what's going on. How is it on your end? I can see the screen, um, but I'm not, I see you moving your cursor. Okay, so you see Canvas right now, right? I do, yeah. Oh, okay, so let me do this. Let me try this. Let's, I'm gonna share the entire screen instead of just Canvas. Let's try that. Good, that helps, that helps. Now can you, now can you see a Word document? Now I can, yes. Yay, okay, good. So let's, let's go back, I'll go back a couple steps. Okay, um, and I, I tried to, uh, unmute earlier and I got kicked out and had to rejoin again, but your voice was glitchy. So there's a message that saying that was popping up saying your internet is unstable. So I didn't know if it was yours or mine. If it pops up on you, it's you. Yeah. I okay. get that at home. Okay. Yeah. So it could be anything at this point, but mine, I haven't seen a freeze okay. on me. And I could tell you last night at home, I had a class and it was like, er, er, e, uh, and I could, I can see that. Okay, so, thank yeah. you. So hopefully this works. So let me go back. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, so if you hit control Z, it actually um, erases any step that you did. Yeah, so let me keep going back. I'm gonna erase even the first page. There we go. All right, so here, I'll make it big. So what I did is again, I just typed like a crazy person. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna type like a crazy person for a sec. Now, Again, I don't type very well, so this is what I got. Okay. So now you see, like, again, my suggestion is just take a Word document and just type. Don't worry about formatting at first. Just type your content. The content's the most important thing. Then focus on the content, right? Then the formatting happens because once, um, once you get your content in, now you're just making it pretty. But if you start with making it pretty and then you kind of like are worried about Oh, I'm running out of space or I went too long. No, just get, get your words out and then make it pretty, right? So again, this is what two paragraphs looks like. Um, let's say you're writing whatever, just write.
from your heart, write what stuck out, stood out to you, write how you would answer that question. This is not, again, a research paper. This is, it's um, not, I didn't ask your opinion, but I'm asking your impressions. So you could offer your opinion, but at the same time, it's really, what are you taking away from the class? What do you, what, how did it stand? How would you explain it to somebody else? How did it stand out to you? Um, okay, so for formatting, so you can either highlight control A and it highlights everything. Now, remember up here in our home ribbon, this is where all the main controls are, okay? But again, you can choose your font. So let's say, let's go to Times New Roman. That's pretty standard. Um, but also you wanna make it, you wanna make it 12. So you can go up one or you can just drop down and do, right? Just remember in Word document, there's three ways of doing anything. There is a keystroke, there's a drop down menu, and then there's a button. So whatever you're comfortable with, I kind of do a combination of a bunch of different things, but I've been working in Word since what, 1996, so, right. So this is kind of like, these are all your words, right? But now we're gonna go to making it pretty in terms of like the, um, the spacing. So let's right here, so this up and down arrow right here. And again, I, if you don't have this ribbon, you'll see, you might have something that looks like this. If that's the case, all you have to do is click any of these drop down menus and the ribbon shows up. If you want it to stick, go to this little pin over here and hit pin. I also suggest again, this ruler. And if you don't have that ruler, hit view and hit click here ruler. And if I click it off, it's gone. If I click it off, right? which is kind of cool, yeah, yeah. So again, back to home, our little home drop-down tab, and we're gonna look for the spacing, which is the up and down arrows. Just click two, so it does all the hard work for you. Because if you were like hard, doing a hard, like when we were typing class when I was in high school, we had to do the hard, it, trust me, computers are here to make our lives easier and you tell it what to do, not the other way around, right? Now, here's the thing. Now, SAM is gonna, this one is like describe, the socialization, right? So, so don't put it, don't put a, a space there between. Okay. Now, do you notice how um, it's just the essays, the paragraph starts as a hard left? I here just hit tab, put your cursor there and hit tab. That's it. That's it. That is a perfectly proportioned one inch margin, top and bottom essay with no extra space here. What happens is that people will do this too. And sometimes it's your template in Word. Word is set up to this. It'll say, add a space after the paragraph. We're not doing that. We can't do that. That's not okay. Right? Now, again, I'm not expecting you guys to be like Word gurus or like in terms of formatting, but this is basic, basic stuff. This will help you in every class. Now, again, if you see this extra thing and you're like, but if I hit return, it comes, it, disappears and then I can't fix it. All you have to do is either highlight the whole page or even highlight half of it, or it doesn't matter how, go to spacing and hit remove space after a paragraph. Trust me, in grad school, yeah, I lost points on that. <laughs> yeah, not now, <laughs> later. <laughs> so do you see what I'm saying? Write, write your one page. Write what you write to your heart's content, right? And uh, just as a just as a note, um, if you want to, it's up to you. If you're comfortable, with this this is not typically APA formatting, but if there's a course term, you can always bold it. You could always italicize it. It's up to you how I know that you know that that's a course term. So again, when I'm saying write to your heart's content, then go back and be like, oh. Well, that's a course term. I'm going to highlight that or bold that. Or I was already talking about that, but I really, what happens is sometimes people talk around it. They'll say something like um, the, fa the, the family's communication style was very, um, was very um, demanding and um, pushy and um, focused on winning at all costs. Um, and so that is actually sort of a sideways definition of, um, um, oh gosh, I'm losing it right now in my head. Um, oh my gosh, I'm losing it in my head. Um, the, like the roundabout definition of, um, communication patterns. And it's also a roundabout definition of, um, family authority patterns and things like that. So, 
sometimes when you're talking around it, you're actually talking about a course term that you could just throw in, right? Good. So again, I would say if we if I kept going like this, watch. I'm gonna keep going like this, and this is, and I'll make it smaller so you guys can see. Uh, again, the if you have a little scrolly piece on your mouse, press the control button. I'm holding the control button right now, and I'm scrolling, and this makes it zoom. Yeah, so I I think that's very very helpful. Um, so let's say I was writing this. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So control C, control V. So now I have like one, two, three, four paragraphs, right? This is it for one, one essay, that's it. Yeah, you can keep going. And I would say no more than two pages. So let's take out these, something like that. Something like this, okay. Make sense? Right, and then when you get to the second page, you can just like hit enter. Oh, here's another little tip and trick that I love. This little backwards P. This is called um, a formatting, formatting advanced layout. Now you'll see it on my page here, right? Um, when you guys turn it in, it doesn't matter if it's on or off. It's just a toggle on, toggle off. It's just a formatting. It just tells you that's where I hit the paragraph. I hit the enter key. I hit the enter key, right? Um, if I was to go to the end of my essay and I wanted to create a new page, here's a little tip and trick. Press control and uh, shift and enter, and you'll get a new page. Watch control, shift, enter, new page. SA2. Yeah, describe. Right. Uh, describe. Now, again, now, if I don't have Grammarly on because it would be like freaking out, even right here, it's trying to spell check. Kavashino did if you hit if you. It's not going to do it. Um, so again, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. See, this is another formatting mark. You'll see, you won't see it when you took, take this off. Right? I could even go like this. Watch this. Essay number three. Um, critically. Right. Now watch this. If I put my cursor right in front of there and hit Control Shift and Enter, there's your new page. Yeah. So tips and tricks on Word just to make, again, make the computer work for you and not the other way around. So again, at the end, if you're not sure the formatting is off because or on or whatever, like if it's standardized, you can write all your stuff. I also hit control A, make sure you're at the normal template. And even if it's see, it throws me back here to the basic, basic template. You can even start over here and say, okay, let's go back to times. Let's go back to 12. And let's go back to two. And that's how you know you're on on par. Make sure that your essays are just indented one. Something like this. And you are good to go. Now, again, as a as a, to do a cover page, this is like I kind of looping back a little bit. Go to the next tab over called insert blank page. What's up? It'll let you it, and again, if I go back to that paragraph. And it says right here, page rank. So you can look up the APA formatting for that. It's gonna require you to use um, header, right? So a lot of APA looks like this. So I just clicked header and they, it's like this, looks like this. I'm not gonna tell you all of it because I, I quite frankly, I'm not up to date with the seventh edition, um, right? And then you're gonna write your close header and footer, and then you're going to, you know, write your title. And then again, to center, you just hit this. Something like that. There is a template in here, in Canvas, in the website, in the hyperlink. And again, if you need to um, learn how to do some of these things, the library has those workshops, and I have extra credit for those. So. Again, I don't want to put more on your plate, but at the same time, there's a lot of resources out there. And these things that I'm, these little tips and tricks I'm teaching you is going to help you, right? Okay, so any more questions on, because I'm going to stop it for a second and then um, I'll keep going for those of you who are here. Any more questions on the assignment? Good. Okay, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the share right now. I'm going to post this part of the video. Um, if you guys have any questions at any time, make sure that you reach out to me. 
if you are like really concerned if this is looking good you're welcome to send it to me no later than friday and i can look at it and give you some tips and tricks i'm okay with that that's for everybody by friday by midnight so i can look at it saturday and give it back to you hopefully saturday and then get you um give it give you some time to like look at it yeah so friday the latest okay so i'm going to stop sharing i'm going to stop the recording or pause the recording.